All right, so now I want to teach you about factorials. Now, the definition of factorial is derived from the examples before that we were working with, which is our counting techniques without repetition. So remember in the first question we did there, where we had 10 numbers, and then because we used up two, we only had nine numbers, and then eight numbers left. So we had 10 times nine times eight times seven, so on. So the factorial comes from that idea so n factorial, so factorial is this exclamation mark, yeah? So you've probably seen that on your calculator, I've always wondered what it does. So what it means is factorial. n factorial just means that number multiplied by one number less than that, multiplied by two numbers less than that, so on until one. So for example, if it was 10 factorial, like in the first question, it will be 10 times nine times eight, so on until one. The factorial can also be used in this way. So if you have n factorial, so 10 factorial, it can actually become this times one number less factorial. So the idea is because n minus one factorial is essentially all of this, that means if I multiply it just by the number greater than that, so one number bigger than that, it's gonna be n factorial. Yeah, so the important thing, look here, this n minus one factorial is the same as all of that. So that's why n times this will give you n factorial, okay? And other little points to note, one factorial equals one, and now zero factorial equals to one as well. The explanation for that just goes far too into depth, so just remember zero factorial equals to one for this case. All right, so examples of how we use factorials is we have four factorial here. It's gonna be four times one number less than that, so it's n minus one, which is three, times two numbers less than that, so four minus two, which is two, times one. So you only stop when you reach one, okay? So that just equals to 24. Now, when you have 100 factorial, it becomes 100 times 99 times 98, so on, Remember, until it reaches one. Now, we're gonna use this rule here, which is 100 factorial is exactly the same as 100 times 99 factorial. And that's because 99 factorial essentially encompasses all of that. So this here is exactly the same as 99 times 98, so on until one. So just remember, if you have 99 factorial, if you multiply by one number greater than that, it will become 100 factorial. It's just like n minus one factorial multiplied by one number greater than that, which is n, gives you n factorial. Factorial, remember, it's your exclamation mark and it's derived from your idea of counting techniques without repetitions. So let's work with factorials now because it can be a bit confusing, but we'll go through some questions together and should cement it in your head. So we'll start off with question 10 where we want to calculate three factorial and don't use your calculator. Yeah, so don't press that big exclamation sign. So remember three factorial means that we start off with three, then one number less than that times two, and then one number less than that times one. Okay, and once we reach one, we can stop. So in this case, it's just three times two times one. So it just equals to six. So that was quite simple. Let's have a look here. Here I want to simplify eight factorial over seven factorial without using a calculator. So how am I going to do that? Well, you could write it all out, but an easier way to think of it is that your eight factorial can actually be written as eight times seven factorial, because that's seven factorial represents seven times six times five. So if I can write it like this, that means then I can cancel the two seven factorials to leave me with eight. So the important step here is changing your eight factorial to eight times seven factorial. And this actually comes up quite often in your proofs and induction that we'll do later on. What about in question 12 here? Here we want to simplify 100 factorial over 98 factorial. So this would take you forever if you were to write out 100 times 99 times 98 times 97, so on until one. But what we can do is try and make this 
have 98 factorial in it to cancel out. So this can be written as 100 times 99 times 98 factorial. So that means I can cancel this and that, and that just leaves me with 100 times 99, which is 9,900 here. So what I've done here is just made this into 100 times 99 times 98 factorial because I know that 98 factorial encompasses 98 times 97, so on until one, yeah? So it always gets a little bit harder when we're working with n instead of numbers, but you can just consider it in the same concept. So question 13 here, we want to simplify n plus one factorial over n factorial. So what we can do is change that to n plus one factorial times n plus one times n factorial. So the only, remember, this is the same as when we had eight factorial over seven factorial, yeah? n plus one just means one more. And remember how we changed this to eight times seven factorial? So in that same way, that n plus one represents an eight and n is just one number less than n plus one. So that's why it's n factorial. Can you see that? And then you can just cancel those two and it should leave you with n plus one as your answer. So if you get confused with the n's, just substitute a number in to help you understand the concept of what you're working with. All right, let's move on to question 14 now. So here in question 14, we wanna simplify n minus one factorial over n plus one factorial. So we need to make this have n minus one factorial in it because n minus one factorial is going to be smaller than n plus one factorial. So the n plus one factorial, subtract one from that becomes n. Subtract one from that becomes n minus one factorial. So similar to if we had 100 factorial up here, um, 98 factorial up here and 100 factorial down here. We've just changed that to 100, subtracted one, so that became n and subtracted another one, which made it n minus one factorial. And then I've just canceled that and that, which has left me with one on n times n plus one, okay? So I have come across a lot of students and the end does get confusing, but just remember you can always substitute a number in to help you understand. So here we wanna simplify n factorial times n plus one. What does that become? Well, maybe it'll become more obvious to you if I rearrange it a little. What if I have that n plus one before the n factorial? Can you see how that's one more than n? which means I can just make that n plus one factorial. So another way to consider that is if I had seven factorial times eight, and then I just rearranged it to eight times seven factorial. So this is one more than that. So it actually just becomes eight factorial. Can you see how that's all we've done here? So just remember, if you see n plus one ahead of n factorial here, you can make it n plus one factorial in the same way that if you had n minus one factorial and n in front of that, you could make it n factorial. Let's have a look at question 16 here. So we wanna, this is a question where we wanna find x. Yeah, so we'll be solving something here. Find x if six factorial plus seven factorial equals x times six factorial. So in this case, we have six factorials times x which means that I know I have to somehow factorize six factorial out of that and whatever is remaining will equal to x. So firstly, I can change a seven factorial to seven times six factorial. And now I can factorize six factorial out. So that just becomes one plus seven equals to x times six factorial. Yeah, and that and that just cancel. So x equals to just one plus seven, which equals to eight, all right? So the important step here was changing it from seven factorial to seven times six factorial. So yeah, good, we're working with these questions now with factorial. So you can see that you can work with it just with other numbers when we're solving for x or factorizing or simplifying. All right, what about this question? 
Here we want to find x if 18 factorial minus 17 factorial equals to x times 17 factorial. So similar to the question before, we need to somehow factorise out that 17 factorial. How am I going to do that? Well, firstly, change the 18 factorial to 18 times 17 factorial. Now I can factorise that out. That leaves me with 18 minus 1. And then I can just cancel my 17 factorial. And that leaves me with x equals to 18 minus 1. So x equals to 17. All right. I hope you can see how it's really not that difficult once you get used to factorials. It's a hard concept to come to grasp with at the start, but as you work with it, you just see it as a normal number. So lastly, we want to work with question 18 here. So here we want to factorise n factorial plus n plus 1 factorial. So we're just factorising as we would do with normal numbers, which means we need a common factor to take out. Now, we don't have a common factor quite yet but we can make a common factor, can't we? So how we can do that is with n plus one factorial, I can make that into n plus one times n factorial, yeah? So that's just one less n factorial. Now I have my common factor. So I can factorize that out and that'll leave me with one plus n plus one. And so factorised becomes n plus 2 times n factorial. So with all of these, just follow the basic concepts. Factorise, we need a common factor. Got to make it so we can actually find a common factor.